I don't ever slow up, no I don't take sh** I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this I'll always show up Okay, today it is time to review the Calgary Barbell program, the 16-week program, and this is my second version of the of the Johnny Hazel review and my variant on this program. So, do I like this program? Well, of course I do. I've, rev- I've reviewed it twice and I've used it a few times myself, but there are a few things I dislike about it. Like with all programs, you're going to have the good parts and the bad parts. So, let's talk firstly about, let's start on the, the training matches page. So, first thing you have to do is enter your one rep maxes. Now, this isn't like the original program. In the original program, there was only the three main lifts. I have added in other lifts, okay? And the SLDL is your stiff leg deadlift, and I say that's about 50% of your deadlift one rep max. If you wanna get your stiff leg deadlift max, that's what I use. Second thing you need to do is put in either five or 2.5, five for pounds, 2.5 for kilograms. Now here is the RPE to percentage of one rep max conversion table. Take, you know, is it 100% accurate? No. Um, is it useful? Yes. Have I used it to change RPEs to percentages? Absolutely yes. But with this program, if you're looking at that on one day and it's telling you to do three sets of four uh, at at a percentage of 89% of your one rep max and you know that is not on the cards for that day and you don't think that that's that's actually possible then what you can do is go back to this document right here take the percentage that you were meant to do so if it was meant to be 89% for three reps come back here and find out what the RP is so if we said 89% uh, 89% for three reps. We know it'll be an RP of nine. So what you can do instead is then work up, do a couple of warm up sets, and then work up to your first working set. So if the if you're meant to do three, uh, four sets of three, uh, work up to that weight that you can. The next set will be an RP of nine for three reps. Okay. And then when we look at the RP scale and we say it is nine uh, in this instance right here, could definitely definitely done one more rep so you know for sure that rp of a nine is that it's going to be a weight that you know you could do one more rep you can definitely do it it's not kind of like maybe i could have done it not sure it's a definite okay so if you warmed up for let's say in your warm-up you get to four reps 145 kilograms and you've got to do three reps then you might want to do like 147.5 kilograms for for three reps and you know you've got one left on the tank so you can do it this way i hope that makes sense it made sense in my head (laughs) Uh, so if you are not happy with some of the percentages in the program go back to the rp conversion chart and just reverse it so instead of trying to find the percentage you try to find the rp once you've done that go to your rp scale here and just check what the RP is, what it represents. Could you maybe do three more? Definitely do two more. Whatever, whatever one it is on here. These are the RPs right here, and this is the description of what it should feel like. So there we go. So there's a few things in here. Um, we'll listen. We'll, we'll disregard that for now. The plus F is a fatigue set. That means you go down by five percent in load and do the same reps. The plus R is a repeat set. So you repeat reps at the same load. You'll see that towards the end of the program. So once you've done all that, you entered your maxes, you familiarized yourself with the uh, the RP to percentage scale, then you can get started. Now I split it into four training blocks and then the final week, which you're preparing for your competition. Just, I like to work like that. Before it was labeled as in week one to four, five to eight, nine to 13, blah, blah, blah. I just like to think in terms of training blocks. And each of these training blocks does have a very specific objective. I'd say the the first training block is quite sort of hypertrophy focused, hypertrophy. There's higher volume, higher reps per set, lower percentages, and it's quite introductory. So it's kind of introducing you to the program. It's you're getting accustomed to it. You're building up that strength. You're not just jumping straight in doing high high intensity workouts, you know, 89, 90% maximal loads, low volume. You've got a lot going on here. You've got some good hypotrophy based exercises, some accessory 
isolation based exercises you're doing less competition lifting uh, more sort of hypotrophy accessory assistance work and this is a good so this is a good sort of block one to get you ready for the next few blocks right as you can see here it is a four day a week routine you can do a monday when monday tuesday and then a thursday friday or whatever works for you monday wednesday friday saturday whatever training schedule works for you so we start day one you know it's all written there for you very clearly the people who are listening to this program should really be at least an intermediate lifter at this point in time you should be very familiarized with these exercises um, and know what they are know the terminology sets reps intensity intensity means the percentage or the rp the load means the weight this is stuff you should really know by now if you're looking to do this program so all in all, it's all pretty self-explanatory here we've got the competition and the pause bench now the pause for in this instance can be however long you like i'd say two to three seconds no more no less uh you've got three other exercises that you're doing at higher volume but it implies low intensity so for the strict overhead barbell press three sets of eight choose a weight you can do for maybe nine reps 10 reps and just do three sets for that same with the pendulay barbell rows and the g the ghr back extensions so as you can see here we've got three kind of accessory high volume more tailored toward hypotrophy and just acclimatizing yourself to the program exercises day two we are doing the competition uh, deadlift you've got your three second pause front squat uh, wide grip seated row which is your kind of your hypotrophy isolation based exercising the first three are pretty self-explanatory here the percentages are written there the load the reps that you should be doing um, now with the pause it says quite clearly there that's a three second pause competition deadlift you should know this but it's the one you use at the competition sumo conventional whichever one the pin squat pins set for full depth that means the pins are not set for you to hit parallel just above parallel just below a full depth squat you know where uh, the depth that will get you the three white lights at a powerlifting competition so not necessarily asked a grass squat but a good three lights squat with proper depth um no quarter wrapping so the pins will be set in a position where you're hitting the appropriate depth you need to make sure those pins are set properly then you do the one board press i changed that from two to one uh, one arm dumbbell and then the uh, bird dogs uh, you should know what they are by now. It's a great exercise to do. Uh, one arm dumbbell rows, one of my favorite rows. I love using the dumbbells for rows. Uh, and the ball press is kind of self explanatory. It's just using one, not two. Day four. Ooh, what's going on there? It's been wrapped. Okay, so you've got the two, se the two second pause deadlift. Pause barely off the floor. And so that kind of gives you an idea where you should be pausing. Rep bench is touch and go, meaning there's no pauses. It touches the chest. You just touch and go, touch and go for high volume work, lower percentages, lower intensity. Then you've got your stiff leg deadlift. Again, slightly more volume, less intensity. And then we've got lap pull downs and tricep press downs. Pretty simple there. So block two is week five to eight. You are now starting to get into your powerlifting competition mode. We've got day one competition squat, competition pause, pause bench. When you do this program, it's the pause press is basically what you're going to be doing at a competition. When you do an IPF competition, it's not a touch and go bench press. Okay, they will require you to do a, a sufficient amount of pausing on the chest to make sure that you've got the depth. So you're not going to just touch your chest and then they're going to say, all right, go up, get the bar up, basically. No. Uh, they're pretty ruthless. I mean, I've been at a competition before where I had to pause at least what felt like 10 seconds, but I think it was about 3.4 seconds on the chest. So it's good to train with a paused bench press because that's what you're going to do at competition. You're not going to get to any IPF sanctioned competition event um, and they're going to just let you touch and go. No, it's never going to work like that. So it's good to train your pause benching. Then you've got your stiff leg deadlift and your side planks. We, day two competition we're coming back to competition deadlifting for a varying of percentages and rep schemes we've got the two second pause we'll come back to the pause pressing competition squat wide grip seated row 
pretty self-explanatory there. Um, now we come to day three, we've got the two second pause front squats. Um, I've changed this to uh, front squats, competition pause, bench press, you're back on the, the pausing for the bench. Competition means what grip you would apply when you're at the competition. And then you do competition deadlift and then do some shrugs. Day four, I've changed it to rack pulls from shin level. Uh, rack pulls from shin level. It was something else before I've changed it. Because um, you're using higher intensity, so you want to kind of use uh, using the rack pulls, focusing on trying to get that lockout strength. Touch and go bench press, pec, dumbbell pec flies, and one arm dumbbell rows. So there we go. That's block two. You're getting closer now to getting into the zone to start preparing for the meet. So we'll move on to the next one. So here we go, block three, week nine to week 11. Right, the percentages now are really more tailored towards getting closer to maximal loads, working up. You're now focusing mainly in this three week period on your competition lifts and doing variations on those competition lifts to fix sticking points. That's the purpose of this training block. We are now moving away from sort of block one, block two work, which is kind of hypotrophy based. There's a lot more accessory exercises incorporated. That's in the past now. We're moving on to focusing on our competition lifts. Percentages are interesting. Here we got 82% on day one for the competition squat, and then we do two back off sets at 71%. Same applies for the pause bench. Pause, how long? Two to three seconds, let's say. Then you do two assistance accessory exercises. Day two, competition deadlift. We're going to do four sets, 482, then two sets, four, kind of two back off sets at 71%. Can do some pin press, chest work. Okay, that means you set the pins up so the bar is just level with the chest. Uh, that's what you need to do with that one. You can do competition squats, uh, pretty low percentages there, pretty low load for three sets of five. And then some wide grip seated rows. Day three, you can do some parallel pin squats. Now here we've got the F and R coming in. F stands for failure sets. That means you just reduce the load by 5% and then do it for the same number of reps. R means repeat sets. Use the same number of reps and the same loads. If it says 2R, that means two repeat sets. If it says 3R, that means three. If it means one, it means one. Simple as that. Then you are going to do some competition deadlift work again and some low rows. Day four is the two second pause deadlifting just off the floor. And that means probably maximum about mid shin, I would say. Uh, pretty simple there. We got one set of four at 70%, then you do two failure sets. We got be uh, bench mini band work, uh, some barbell overhead pressing, and some one arm dumbbell rows. There we go, that's that. Now, with the RPE stuff, how do I know what RPE is? Here's the RPE scale, you convert it from there. So four reps, RPE of eight. Let's go four, eight, boom. We know that would be 84%. Alternatively, come here and have a look at this. RPE of eight means you could have definitely done two more reps. There we go, simple as that. Let's move on to the next week. So training block four, we're gonna do week 12 to 15, four weeks. Intensity's gone up, you can see quite evidently straight away, 86 to 92% here for the competition squat and the competition pause bench. We're gonna do some strict overhead barbell stuff for two failure sets, one failure, two repeat sets, and then one failure set. That's really kind of just a accessory work. Don't overthink that. These are the main focuses of those exercises. Then day two, we're gonna do competition deadlifting. Percentages have gone up, 86 to 92%. Very low reps now. Our back off sets are lower the percentages, uh, but we're doing some slightly higher rep sets. Do some two second pause bench work for some repeat and failure sets. Uh, we're gonna work up to 92% in week 14, then back off slightly to 84% in week 15. Day three and day four, I've included the RP for the last few. Let's talk about the first two exercises. We're gonna do some parallel pin squats, set the, the pins up so it's the squat depth is parallel. Don't go too low with this one, that's why I've made it parallel. You're going to work all the way up to one set of one at 92%. As I said before, this is very high intensity week. We're now at maximal effort loads right towards the end of this program. But even starting at 86%, then 89 that's pretty high intensity work. 
Then we're going to do some close grip bench pressing, working on those triceps. RP of nine for one set and then two failure sets. The RPs are written quite clearly there. And then day four, we're going to do some two second pause deadlifting, probably about mid shin level. I would say that's the right place to pause for two seconds. Again, we're going to work with the RP scale on this one. Um, and you can see we've got a couple of failure, we've got two failure sets. We're going to do some repeat sets as well. Then some touch and go bench pressing. It's good to do this every now and then, uh, especially after doing so much variation work with a bench press in this program. It's nice to have these touch and go sets. There we go, that's the final training block and then you move on to the, the final week, the taper week, where you're gonna really chase some big numbers. So let's move on to that. So, final week of the training program. So working, what you're gonna mainly be doing here is testing your openers and doing some sort of sub-maximal load training work just to prepare yourself for the competition um, but you're really the goal for this week is really to try and find what that opener will be so once you know what you, comfortably what your opener should be you should know your second and third attempt alternatively if you're chasing a PR in the gym testing that opener means you know the following week when you're going to chase a PR in the gym what what you want to do what your attempts will be to try and find that new personal record for that lift in the gym so at least you have a good indication here what your opener should be then you can kind of calculate what your second and third attempt will be at the competition or what you're going to do when you get in the gym following week and chase your pr so it's all pretty self-explanatory there it's nothing really to over explain the percentages are there the rep scheme is there it's the number of sets number of reps all there so there we go that's the program it's a great program and it's easy for me because i don't have to over explain everything because it's all pretty much self-explanatory so good luck with this program i hope you enjoy it if you have any comments comment on youtube or message me on instagram you'll find that link below you'll also find the link to the program below in the description section so enjoy good luck